Auburn, Florida is home to Eastern Florida State College and Titan Fieldhouse, side of the inaugural Face Coast Challenge. Four college teams came here with one goal in mind, winning the championship trophy. Second game of the night, Clemson takes on Mississippi State. In the first game, Purdue beat Liberty of the A-Sun 77-64 behind 19 points on 9 of 10 shooting from freshman sensation center Zach Eady at 7-4, tallest player in Purdue history. Well, he was just amazing. Championship game here tomorrow night at CBS Sports Network at 8.30 Eastern. Welcome back to the studio in Fort Lauderdale. Dave Ryan alongside the coach, Bob Wenzel. What a story, Zach Eady, in his debut. No, he was fantastic, and I think surprisingly so. Uh, Purdue lost a seven-footer to transfer, and now they have a new seven-footer who is just as productive and maybe more so. Amir Sims, big story for Clemson. Preseason all ACC for good reason, Coach. He's sensational. Six foot eight, 240 pounds. He will always be remembered in Clemson history for helping them beat Carolina for the first time on the road last year. He's on the Carl Malone watch list for the best power forward in all of college basketball. You are going to enjoy watching this young man play. And on the other side, we have DJ Stewart, who is a six foot six inch player with a seven foot wingspan. He started most of the games down the stretch for them. They were top four in the SEC. And of course, he's their leading returning scorer. The Bulldogs also feature senior center Abdul Adu, one of the SEC's top shot blockers. Also, he graduated today, the first in his family to do so, try to celebrate helping Mississippi State to a win against Clemson. Lineups and tip on the way from Melbourne, Florida. College basketball on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by AT&T 5G. Fast, reliable, secure. Beautiful 72 miles of coastline here in the Space Coast, Melbourne, Florida. Starting lineups for this game here tonight for Clemson. Alamir Dawes runs the show. Sophomore from Newark, New Jersey. Beat Florida State last year, the coast-to-coast -coast layup. And for Mississippi State, Naquan Smith. Uh, one of a couple freshmen along with Cameron Matthews. First time since 16-17 for Mississippi State that two freshmen will start a game for a Ben Howland-led Mississippi State team. So ready to go here from Melbourne. Game two, Purdue won the first game. Convincingly over really good Liberty team, the reigning ASUN tournament champs. Here it's ACC, SEC head-to-head. -head. Adu. And Amir Sims will jump up at center court here at Titan Fieldhouse. Here we go. Game two underway. Adu, number 24, 182 blocks in his career. Smith, number five, the point guard, has never played a college game yet. And he is quick. Like game one, a lot of new faces, new places for each of these programs. Let's see how the players respond. Tony Smith and... Early traveling call for turnover Clemson. Lou Smith is a guy who is very, very big. 6'10, 250, transfer from Western Kentucky. And Mississippi State is loaded with four and five men of the 6'10, 260 variety. They go deep with big guys. Played at Western Kentucky for Rick Stansbury, the former head coach at Mississippi State. Connection there for sure. Chase Hunter on the handle, and a whistle stops play here just underway. Brown out and coach Clemson, year 11. Good run last year with some of those historic wins. And Bob talked about first ever win. That North Carolina program is 0 and 59. They beat Louisville, they beat Duke, beat Florida State. A lot of huge wins last season for Clemson. Especially down the stretch, they played their best. Hunter on the kickoff for Sin. Front iron missing a long three. The rebound kept alive. Good effort there from Hunter Tyson. And another possession for Clemson. Tyson gets the return into the corner, and it's off the side of the backboard. Here come the Bulldogs. Whistle, drive, layup. Cameron Matthews, a chance for a three point play for Mississippi State. Basket's good. Cameron Matthews, only a freshman. Very, very physical player. Ben Howland in his sixth season as Mississippi State's coach. And of course, Ben and I are good friends over the course of many, many years. And three straight final fours with UCLA. Also 
a great run at Pitt and uh, one of the better coaches in all of college basketball. They play tough defense. Their signature is their rebounding, and we're going to see a lot of physicality out of the Bulldogs in this one. That's right, 20 win season for Mississippi State, including the NIT semifinals a couple years back. Sims will kick out and off into the foul call. First on Amir Sims. Nice play by the freshman. Avon uh, Smith jumps in and gets the first foul on Sims, which is not good news. Watch number five now. Jumps in the lane. He's outside of the restricted arc, clearly. Plants his feet on the floor. Great defensive play from the freshman. Early. Bench time for Sims. Yeah. Surprised? And immediate. Yes. And, and some coaches do that. And, uh, you know, a guy gets his first foul and he needs to pay out for a few minutes. But a guy like Sims is so key to this team. You can't leave him out for long. Brad Brad told us about this week on our Zoom call. Second effort. It's a good effort there down low for Tolu Smith. First bucket for the Richard sophomore and transfer from Western Kentucky of Conference USA. And Coach Grinnell said that Sims got to realize how important he is to our team and can't get in foul trouble early in game, so he's out for now. Trap the miss. And the Bulldogs come the other way. Stewart, long range shot. D.J. Stewart Jr. And how about the start for Mississippi State? Well, I think that's really, really good because they're going to take an opportunity on the break. But this is their signature at this, team, at, at this end. Defense and rebounding is the name of the game for Mississippi State. They lost two players to the NBA draft who left early. Perry, who went to the Nets, and Woodard, who went to the Sacramento Kings. And with those two in the lineup, they would be extremely dangerous in the top two or three in the Southeastern Conference. Possibly MVP type, player of the year type years for those two had they stayed with Mississippi State. Instead, second round picks, and as Coach Allen said, the guaranteed money goes way down. Your chances of having a longer career go down when you're a second round pick in the NBA draft. But those two are gone, so it's about a fresh start for the Bulldogs this year. Alamir Dawes kicks out, wide trap. No more knee brace for him. Beads on the baseline. And a big bucket for P.J. Hall, the freshman at 6'10". Number one player in the state of South Carolina last year. They are expecting big things from Hall. Traveling call. Stewart Jr. a little trouble with a handle. Ball went behind his back there as his feet were moving, and it's a walk. Right here, the freshman inside pivot. Nice little soft jump shot. Big time scorer in the state of South Carolina. Big, big get for Clemson. Highest rated recruit in the Brad Brownell era. At Clemson, that's a big one, no question. Into the corner, trap, whoa. Way off, rebound for Matthews. Trap ACL surgery last year, missed a bunch of games, but he's been around for a long time. Versatile kind of player. About 10 games last year. Clemson happy to have him back. Brownell telling us, not sure how the guy's going to respond as I do want to take an extra step or an offensive foul. Call that a walk. Good defense. His point, coach, who's going to stand up tall? Who's going to really respond to the bright lights because there's so many new players on each side? Yeah, and and uh, some are transfers, some are transfers who sat out, some are transfers who are immediately eligible, some are freshmen in their first game. So, uh, you know, all of those things and, and the lack of uh, continued practice by a lot of teams makes for some uh, irregularity, especially offensively for teams. They're just not in the flow of things. Jonathan Baer in the game, number one, he's 6'10". Been through two ACL tears, native of Wiesbaden, Germany. And another transfer, so he's in for the first time. Faces for Clemson and Mississippi State in this game. Something to keep an eye on for sure. Dawes with a nice drive in the basket for two. There's a player on Clemson's bench that I am very much interested in watching, and his name is Nick Honor. He's number four. He will be in the game. He was a great player at Fordham early in his career, transferred, sat out, and he's uh, 
He's ready to go. He and Dawes could play together or separately. I think that's going to be a key for Clemson. Smith to a dude who was not expecting the pass and then lost it. That's out of bounds with a good play by Chase Hunter of Clemson. Just underway, game two. Who plays Purdue tomorrow night in the championship game? We'll find out here in Melbourne, Florida. Matt Painter, 16th year head coach at Purdue, is now 15-1 in season openers with an impressive win over Liberty, 77-64. In game one, socially distanced scout going on there, coach. <laughs> yeah, and, and when you're in a four-team tournament like this where you play somebody the next night, so much of your – but the, the head coach's mind is on the first game. The assistants scout the other two possible opponents that you may have. And then Matt right now is getting a closer look at both of these games. I think he knows the team so much. But he needs to, especially a guy who's as defensive-oriented as him, have to know who the best shooters are, which guys you want to help off, which guys you don't want to help off. Lots of different things that he would be concerned with. Ben Hallen going for his 500 career win tonight. So some history, potentially, for the great coach from Starkville. Indeed. Tyson works up top. Alex Hemingway, number 12, in for Clemson. Three Dawes point shooter. For three, coach. End of the shot clock cycle. And Tyson with a good rebound. Fresh 20 here for Clemson. Hemingway, the sophomore. A player to keep an eye on. We'll see what his season looks like as Clemson again has so many guys unproven. And then we'll try, as you see the drought out near three minutes for Mississippi State. Try to have big roles with this abbreviated schedule in 2021. Clemson has depth. Coach Brownell was talking to us about the depth, and he said he's got a lot of players that can be used, irreplaceable parts, you know, that they just one same. Nobody's just distinguished themselves other than Slim above everybody else on the team. So uh, a lot of uh, a lot of questions about their team, but he's very excited about the team. He has good potential. Bucket from Toto Smith. His second field goal, 2-3 early shooting for him. Dawes up top from 15, a back iron miss. Smith, a hand on it. And it comes away to Jalen Johnson. I think Mississippi State has a big advantage with Sims on the bench on the interior. With Smith and Davion, uh, Javion Davis and Tolu Smith and Adu. They see that kind of power in there. Tolu Smith is a guy who was their best rebounder. They they do stats on everything at Mississippi State practice, and he's been the best rebounder on their team this year. Take out his physicality, number 35 on the inside. Right here, he pushes off, gets away with a little bit, gets double teamed, but still goes up strongly. He's going to have a good time in the SEC. Transfer from Western Kentucky. Hunter Tyson, coach, picks up his first foul. One more free throw here for Tolu Smith. You mentioned Coach Stansberry, who used to be the uh, head coach um, at Mississippi State. His son, Isaac, is on the team this year. He's number 25. Smith, 11 minutes a game for Western Kentucky as a freshman. And then worked hard with the scout team last year in a red shirt. And here is Honor for the first time. Getting court time for Clemson. Nick Connor, you and I called his game Fordham Rutgers a couple years ago on CBS Sports Network, and he tore the Scarlet Knights to pieces. He had over 30 in that game. Wow. Something else. P.J. Hey. Hall looks really smooth on the baseline. Yeah. P.J., the only mistake he's made is his shoe came untied, and he had to go out. So they got to teach him how to tie his shoes uh, as, a, as a freshman. He'll, he's only a freshman. He'll learn. He'll learn. <laughs> Davis to handle. Watched by Hall. Here's the back end. Davis is fouled by Hall. He is first. You can see how the interior is the main goal of uh, Mississippi State, getting the ball in there, especially against a young player like Hall. You, know, you talk about shoes and tying shoes. The, the famous coach at UCLA, John Wooden, way many, many years ago, Bill Walton tells a story about every year, the first day of practice, he taught the guys how to put on their socks so that they wouldn't get the listings every single year. How you about gotta that? coach everything. <laughs> Did you ever tell your players how to put on their socks properly in shoes to avoid blisters? Nope. No. Nope. I mean, you gotta, gotta learn from the Maybe Wizard of Westwood. Maybe I yeah. <laughs> Davis, one more free throw. We transfer from Alabama. So just one year at Alabama, but Davis, again, the NCAA, a little easier on some of the restrictions with transfers through the COVID era, able to go from 
one league team to another without having to sit out. Yeah, but the problem is you're better off with a guy who sits out and learns your system. And we got Smith that is like that and Davis that isn't. So let's see how uh, accomplished either one of them becomes here. Not a first shot as a Clemson Tiger to remember there for Nick Honor. That three is way off the mark. Here comes Mississippi State and DJ Stewart. Nick Honor is a frequency guy. He's going to get a lot of shots up in the minutes that he plays. I guarantee you that. The lefty Stewart Jr. with a miss. Here comes Honor on the move. Sat out last year after transfer. It's a good point you make about learning a system, getting used to everything. That's not just basketball. It's teammates. It's social. It's academic when you go to a new school. On the right side, that's Jonathan Bear, the senior from Germany, with a miss. So far, this game has been dominated by defense. Uh, the offense of both teams do not look smooth right now. Mishandling of balls. Foul call on DJ Stewart Jr. Trying to get that ball to Cameron Matthews. Nick Honor, good defensive position. Both of the coaches, uh, all of the coaches, actually, we talked to uh, in our Zoom calls, all of them mentioned lack of exhibition games and lack of scrimmages. And um, with the result that they don't know really what to expect from their teams, especially the first year players from their teams. Hunter scored 15 plus points a game, one season at Fordham in the Atlantic tent. He was hemming away with a handle. Honor right side, as Coach talks about. High volume shooter, back iron miss. Oh, really good hustle. Down the hardwood, the freshman for Clemson, and it's tied up. Jalen Johnson in the game number zero. You'll see him in this scrum right here. This is his third college, number zero right there, Jalen Johnson. He started at St. Louis, then transferred to Louisiana, and um, he is an, a mature player. He averaged 15 points a game at Louisiana. He's a graduate transfer. He has scored over 1,000 points in his career already, number zero in white. Kevin Wade, back iron miss. Here's Honor again, Coach. Third try is a Clemson Tiger. And not quite convert again. Good hustle. Offensive glass. Clemson all over it with John Newman the third. And a foul call as Olivier Maxson Prosper. They call him Omax, the freshman from Montreal. As free throws when we return to Melbourne, Florida. Just underway. Bulldogs by three over the Tigers. Just underway game two. Purdue beat Liberty in game one. So the Boilermakers of the Big Ten play the championship game here tomorrow night. 8.30 Eastern. Consolation game will be Liberty against the loser of this one from Titan Fieldhouse as the Space Coast Challenge rolls on Prosper to the free throw line to shoot a couple free throws was fouled just before our last commercial break. Four-star high school recruit, the highest recruit ever at Clemson. That says a lot. Now, this guy is an inter interesting story, Bob, coming from Montreal. He brings energy to the team. Uh, he can play the three or four. He's more comfortable at the wing than he is in the post area. So we've seen a bunch of players in the game already for Clemson, uh, which in some ways is good because they have depth. In some ways it's bad because it's been pretty sloppy so far for, for both teams, really. Nick Honor really trying to do defense right here on Davon Smith, who is only a freshman. Out of bounds, right little block to Tolu Smith, but that's out of bounds and turned over. So kind of the opposite of game one where the shooting was still red hot. Well, right there on that pass, he, he's passing the ball to a six foot ten player at his ankles, and that makes the six foot ten player he might as well be five foot ten. That was not a good play by uh, E.J. Stewart at all in passing at angle. Two man game, Prosper and Otter comes to Hall with a flush finish for Clemson. Great start for P.J. Hall in his Tiger career. Yeah, he, he's going to be a good one for Clemson. I think everybody knows that. Highly recruited player. Everybody wanted him. From the state of South Carolina, Greenville, Spartanburg area, which is very close to Clemson. Stewart Jr. missed fires on that long three. Here's Nick Honor. Brad Brownell so anxious to see how P.J. Hall would respond to the bright lights, and I'd say pretty well so far. Prosper... Can't click from three. Jalen Johnson works for Smith. Good fake and a lefty finish for Tony Smith. Well, the inside shots are going 15 feet in the end, but the outside shots are like a construction site. A lot of bricks, 
going up from the outside in this That's one. Good. Like there this. Is a lot of construction like on, this. on this 95, is isn't there? <laughs> in Florida. Prosper with a miss. Too strong out of three. And the rebound for Javian Davis, the Alabama transfer. Here's Johnson for three. Southpaw, two. Strong. Foul down low at Smith and Hall. Come together with some contact on the boxing. Smith inside. Power. And that's what you want to do. Get the ball inside close. Get it in the bucket. Clemson, 4 of 19, shooting Bob, 21%. Mississippi State is 5 of 9. So the shot volume, significant difference here at a three-point lead for the Bulldogs, shooting about 56%. Ben Hallen told us he wants quality possessions at the offensive end. He wants to play inside out. He wants to pound it inside and have rebounding be the way that the game is played. So far, they've been very solid defensively, and that's the reason that Clemson's missing so much. Cross for the kick out, drive the basket by Dawes, and a foul call offensive variety on Alamir Dawes, sophomore guard out of Newark, New Jersey for Clemson. Well, he played all last year and was a starting point guard last year. So uh, lots of experience by this young man uh, in the ACC wars. But so far, Mississippi State's help side defense has been very, very effective. The middle is clogged up. There hasn't been much opportunity for layups in this game for Clemson. I thought it was interesting when Coach Brownell told us in our Zoom call, Bob, this week that he hopes to see some of his players, first and second stringers, starters on the bench, separate themselves a bit and create some more playing time. And I see why. He's got a very deep team here, and he's trying to get those players to differentiate themselves to earn more playing time once the ACC starts up, right? Yeah, but they need they need some outside shooting. And Iverson Molinar, who is a sophomore, he's their best three-point shooter, is not on the trip. It's not a disciplinary situation, we're told. And without him in there, you know, he shot 38% from three last year on a good, good team. So uh, it's questionable where the outside shooting is going to come from for Mississippi State. Dawes hits that long shot for Clemson, so they finally get something going. Their first three, and they've been 1 of 11 to start the game from beyond the arc at 9%. And they're shooting, struggling. Sims is out of the game after that early foul, and has not returned. Yeah, that's very, very interesting. And, and, of course, Brad knows his team. He knows what's best for his team, and he knows what his players can do. So right now, they've just got to tread water and stay as close as they can until he gets Sims back in the game. Cameron Matthews way off their coach as the struggles continue really on each side, but it is a tie game. Well, right there, Sims, Sims taking it. Well, well, the thing with him is he's such a leader, and you can see his, his numbers there, 6'8", 245. He, he, everything goes through him for them, and uh, when he's not in there, they're kind of like a, a team, not that, not that he's the ball handler, but everything goes through him. He touches it. He gets double teamed. Somebody else gets an easy shot. He gets a, an offensive rebound for a score. He makes a mid-distance jump shot. Without him in the game, they're kind of lost a little bit. Chase Hunter hits their bop and that gives the Tigers a two-point lead. As Brad Brownell said, Amir Sims on that Sweet 16 team a couple years ago for Clemson. Best leader he's ever had. As a head coach, which says something, he's had some really good players in his coaching career, mostly at Clemson. He was four years at uh, UNC Wilmington. He was, he was four years at Wright State. And, uh, now he's had his longest tenure here with Clemson. Another Bulldog miss. Good hustle. Jonathan Bear on the hardwood. A tie-up gives us a timeout in Melbourne, Florida. And Clemson enjoying for now a two-point lead. P.J. Hall, big story. Early has played well for Clemson, the freshman in his debut. has got six points on three of three shooting. P.J. Hall is a six-foot pennant, 235-pound freshman from Clemson Tigers. This is the same move against a different defensive player. Neither one would stop him. And right here, he finds a loose ball and able to get up and put it in the basket. Solid play so far for P.J., and I believe that he is going to be a starter throughout his career. He's been the most productive player so far in the game for Coach Brownell. 
Clemson, top 20 national recruiting class. P.J. Hall, part of that. That's the best for Coach Brownell since he took over the Tiger program. And we asked him via Zoom about that this week. Very happy with his young players, especially Hall. He was really excited when we were talking to him on our tablets and iPhones. It's a Zoom era now. And it's right back to Clemson here about the future and the potential for P.J. Hall. I think he'd like to get Hall and Sims in the game. That would be his best offensive four and five. And uh, but because Sims is out with one foul early, uh, he hasn't been able to do that. And he's still out. Amir Sims has played one minute. The first minute of this game, that's been all. Hall up top for three. Back on our miss, too strong. Kept alive. Good play there by Alamir Dawes. And a fresh 20 for Clemson. Here's Bear, transfer from UNC Asheville. P.J. Hall, the two-man game. Gathers and scores. He's a player. He is a player. That was a tough catch and, and shot right there. He could have easily charged someone. That could easily have been a turnover. He is very, very impressive. This is two big freshmen in both of these games that we've been impressed by. Edie in the first game and Hall in the second game. It's too physical that time on the drive from Davon Smith. Sixteen foul. Chase Hunter picks that one up. Sims, well, played all of one minute officially in this game with a, two early fouls and has not returned. But four-point game. Still early days. Miss up the inbounds play from DJ Stewart. Not close on the lefty baseline jumper, but a foul called. On the positioning there. You know, one thing you got to remember is this is the first game for the players. This is also the first game for the officials. And it's like college basketball. Bob, sorry about that. It's coming up next year on CBS Sports Network. Opening night. And the guys in the studio will keep you updated on what's happening around the country. So many games postponed, canceled due to COVID, but so many great games still happening. That's on the way inside college basketball next year on CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Officials haven't worked out. You're right, first game for everybody. A flop warning was called. Traveling is called this time on DJ Stewart Jr. of Mississippi State. Eight turnovers for the Bulldogs. Two so far for Clemson. And a four-point game here in Melbourne, Florida. Nice execution right there. A little flex action where one guy screens down and then he screens for a player coming out of the corner. And that was really, really nice. First buck of the night for the senior guard, Clyde Trapp. Good to see him healthy. And without that bulky brace he had on last year for much of the season. Trying to work it down low to Tulo Smith, tipped out of bounds, and 11 to shoot here for the Bulldogs. Lots of players have played in this game for both teams, and mass substitutions, three guys coming in, three guys going out for Ben Howland. I think neither one of these coaches really knows what he has because of a lot of the new faces that are on their teams, and they've only been able to practice against each other. So playing against somebody different in a different color uniform, you know, can throw guys off a little bit. And uh, there's some nerves going on out here as well. Davis the miss, but Stewart cleans it up. And the lefty off the glass for his second field goal. Redshirt sophomore and leading returning score for Mississippi State at 8.5 points a game with two players in last week's NBA draft. Big changes offensively for Ben Howland's team this year. Mississippi State preseason prognosticators have them 12th in a 14-team league. Shot from Alamir Dawes over the backboard and out of play. Do you agree? Well, so far from what I've seen in this game, I can't argue <laughs> with him, I'll tell you that. Right. right now, we're a lot of missed shots going on here. And uh, DJ Stewart, offensive boards. When you can't make shots from the outside, things aren't going well offensively for a team. Attacking the glass for second shot is the answer. 
And for Mississippi State, they have the ability to go hard to the offensive glass, and that's what they should be doing here. Drive to the basket. Right on cue. Stewart Jr. with a miss, and the foul against the Bulldogs on the rebound try. Toa Smith returns. It was not up very long. Just a few seconds for Ben Hallett. Well, he's the best interior guy right now and the best guy going to the offensive glass. Honor with the basketball. I think he's 0 for 3 so far in the game. But he wants to go, I can tell you that. Nice movement here to the shooter. Hemingway misfires long range shot. Bear kept it alive for Hall. Here's Honor trying for his first points as a Titan. Not quite. I'm going to keep teeing that up, Bob, until it <laughs> finally goes down for Nick Honor. <laughs> Here's Tolu Smith. He'll drive. Scoop to the hoop. Off the mark. Rebound. Davis. And a foul called down low. Well, that's what you want. Two 6'10 guys getting in there and uh, crashing the offensive glass. Now the question is, can they make free throws? Right here, offensive rebounding. That's what you want from those players. They got to position themselves before the shot goes up. Shot from the left frequently comes off on the right-hand side. So get inside position when you can. When you go to the offensive glass, you're lucky if your man stares at the ball. If he's looking at the ball, you don't have to look at the ball. You guess where it's going to come or you have an educated guess as to where it's going to come and get to that spot. Davis, one more free throw here, Bob. And a foul on P.J. Hall. He's got two. So Sims and Hall, the two stars for Clemson, both two fouls here with 4.47 to go in the first half. And part of that is the strength of Mississippi State. You know, you're going to get in foul trouble against them because of their strength inside. Wow, look at the Bulldog free throw numbers. Not great tonight for either team. 0 for 9 combined. Hemingway operates up top for honor. So you're telling me I need to conduct a free throw clinic at halftime here? That's what I'm telling you. Okay. Tyson, five to shoot here for Clemson. Honor for Tyson up top. Long three airborne. Nails it. Hunter Tyson, a triple for Clemson. He's a catch and shoot guy. Moves well without the ball. That's where he's going to be effective on loose balls. Get it to him. Let him jack it. Junior from Monroe, North Carolina. 21 points a year ago in his second career start. A couple of 20-point games for Clemson. Let's take a look right here. Pass is going to come. Dribble penetration. His man helps, and he is left wide open. He's going to make that most of the time. In the scouting report, you should not come off him. Tolu Smith not used to guarding a guy that far away from the basket. Smith watched by Kidd, another sensational freshman for Clemson. Fryer missed this time. Davis cleans up and lays it in. That's Mississippi State basketball right there. Get it up on the glass and attack the glass with your power players. Watch out for 22 in the visiting uniform. That's the pick here. Lynn Kidd, another four-star high school recruit. Here's Honor. Can't click from three. Smith the rebound for Mississippi State. Well, so far, Honor has not lived up to his reputation as a scorer. And he and Dawes are the two point guards in this team. Mississippi State concentrating on getting it inside now. They were behind big time, but they're getting what they need right now. Inside, Bulldogs. Get on the offensive glass, man. That is some power. All right, Bob, so shot efficiency and volume, big difference. Clemson, 9 of 13, 30%, 2 of 17 from 3, 12%. Meanwhile, the Bulldogs have only taken 17 shots. 7 of 17, 1 of 5 from 3, shooting 41%. Vastly different styles, right? Wait a minute. 2 for 17 is Clemson from 3. Yes. And Mississippi State has only taken 17 shots total. Total shots. That's why it's 20 to 15 with three minutes to go. <laughs> That's good math skills, Dave, right? that was very, very good explanation of what's going on here. I think both coaches realize that their teams are uh, teams that are inexperienced and they uh, have not had exhibition games and they were expecting, probably expecting something of this sort. And uh, at halftime, it'll be interesting to see the adjustments that each of them make. 
both of them have had a lot of players in the game so far, and that sort of contributes to lack of efficiency on offense also. And there's our first free throw of the game. Ball. Wow. The two teams. So Davis hits the second free throw. And finally, we've got one made free throw between the two teams. Clemson just go for two. So far, ties it. We'll drive on the right side here with about three to go in our first half. Winner plays Purdue tomorrow night, 8.30 Eastern here at CBS Sports Network. Loser, Liberty, consolation game. Honor, there it is. Nick Otter for three. First plan, good point. One for six. Celebrating in nearby Orlando. It's about an hour west of where we are here in Melbourne, Florida. Foul call down low. In a battle with Kid and Tolu Smith. Well, Nick Honor is from the Orlando area. I'm sure that's why you uh, said that. Mm -hmm. And he tickles the twine on that particular shot. He's a good player, but he's in a new environment. He's playing for a different team. Uh, he's got uh, different assistant coaches. And uh, so, you know, he's getting his opportunity. There's no doubt about that. Dawes is the starter. He's going to be the backup. And uh, they compete against one another every day in practice. So whether uh, Coach Brownell eventually uses both of them at the same time, that could happen down the road. But so far, he's electing to use one at a time. And he's got a pretty, uh, he's not bringing guys out of the game too early because of lack of production. They're just all getting their opportunity today. Kid travels there, Coach, as he gathers in the paint on a play set for the freshman Lynn Kidd. Has turned back over to Mississippi State. You saw the free throw from Tolu Smith. Nick Honor was an all A-10 freshman team member. And in fact, his one season in the Bronx at Fordham in the A-10 was the 14th highest freshman scorer nationally. Scout team for the Tigers last year. Yeah, he had a big role on that team, no doubt about that. Just over two to go first half. From Melbourne, Florida, Titan Fieldhouse. Space Coast Challenge game two. Purdue on the first one. Here's Smith. Spins baseline. Honor takeaway back from Lynn Kidd. Nice double team between Kidd and Honor. Not read very well by Tolu Smith at all. Didn't realize the double was coming. Put the ball on the floor. They took it away. At nine turnovers for Mississippi State, and it's not good. Kim, tough catch, left low block, double team, and a foul call. Coming up, we'll have the AT&T 5G at the half. We'll get you updated on what's happening in opening day and night. College basketball nationally, it is back. So glad to see college basketball back in action once again. And we're glad to have the first ever Space Coast Challenge for you here from Melbourne, Florida. You know, I live about half a mile away, Bob. It's literally right. I, I pass this arena, Titan Field House, every day driving the kids to school. Well, every you, single day. Didn't you have a daughter who went to school here? Yes, yes. One, one of the Ryan. Team Ryan went. <laughs> West Eastern Florida State College. Well, Lynn Kidd is from Gainesville, Florida. Freshman, 6'10", 230. They like him in Clemson, South Carolina. Remember that top 20 national recruiting class for Brad Brownell, the Tigers. Future is bright. In the paint, Davon Fitt, freshman, first point at the Bulldog. We have not seen many clean shots in this game. I think maybe it's because of defense of both teams has been solid. Maybe because of its nerves. Maybe because I don't know what, but... Um, we haven't seen many clean shots. The execution offensively for either team has not been good, and the shooting has not been good. Tyson, the fake drive, and it's foul on the way to the basket. Before the shot, he liked the end one, but will not get it. Ramirez Sims has not returned the one minute, the two fouls, he's been out. P.J. Hall, two fouls, he's been out. Ball fake, drive to the basket, and uh, clearly a foul before the shot happened. A little elbow to the upper part. Hunter Tyson is more experienced than many of the players on this team. 
Amir Sims sitting in the hallway. Basically, um, I'm not sure if he's leaving or yeah. what, but uh, I'd like to be going into the game. <laughs> thank you, but he's he got two fouls early and he's been fitting the whole half. Wow. And they still are ahead. It's incredible. It took one shot in the one minute, coach. That's been it, and they still have a six point lead without him. Yep, that's good news for them because he makes everybody on that team better. Here's Smith. Tough catch in traffic, can't finish with the left. I like what Clemson's doing defensively when the ball gets in there, into the paint. All five orange jersey attack the ball because they're not concerned about the outside shooting of the Bulldogs. So nice playing by Clemson. Defensively doing what they should be doing against this particular team. Matthew's second foul there, Bob, for Mississippi State. Well, the two post players in this game are sitting on the sideline, and uh, P.J. Hall is going to be the starter. I can see that from just watching them early here. He and Sims will be the five and four man going down the road here. Sims waving to me right now, thinking that we should come out there on the court. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see him to begin the second half, I'm sure. He wants to talk to Lynn Kidd, talk about that great leadership. He's working with a freshman yes, big man yes, indeed. for Clemson, coaching up a little bit here in the yep, love it. final 33 seconds of the First half, one Love more it. free throw here from Hunter, and he hits one of two. Well, he's not playing. He may as well help out coaching a little bit, right? Well, that's right, and that's his role. He's got a big personality. They love him at Clemson. He's the leader, and he's been that way with P.J. Hall in practices, we are told, also. And I think that's helped P.J. get comfortable. Shot clock at nine here, one second. Game clock, shot clock differential. Final moments, first half. Davon Smith needs some help. Gets the bailout pass. The Stewart Jr. pulls up. Elbow jumper is off the mark. Rebound for Hunter. There's the horn. There's the half. Hunter's heave is off the mark. And 20 minutes, Bob. Complete. It was a bit of a slugfest. There were some struggles offensively. Bottom line, it's been a good ball game to watch. Yeah, and I think with... Uh, Amir Sims coming back to start the second half and Hall in there together is going to make a big difference for Clemson. Where the offense is going to come from Mississippi State, we're not sure, but they're going to be strong defensively. One Clemson. team. Bob is going to take on Purdue Championship game tomorrow night. Coming up after the break, it's at and 5G at the half. Go to the studio, get you caught up on everything happening. Opening night of college basketball. Halfway home game two, inaugural Space Coast Classic from Melbourne, Florida. A low-scoring matchup, 26-19. Clemson leads Mississippi State. Winner plays Purdue tomorrow night in the championship game, 8th or Eastern here on CBS Sports Network. Welcome back to the studio, Dave, Ryan, and Bob Wenzel, former head coach at Rutgers. So you look at the first game, Zach Eady was sensational for Purdue at 7-4. First game in his career. P.J. Hall played pretty well for Clemson in his first first half. Yes, 1-7-4, 1-6-10, and uh, a good beginning for each of those young men. Well, fun game to watch, certainly much different than game one of our doubleheader. Not as much offense, but some came from the bench, right? Well, it had to come from the bench because Amir Sims is their best player. He played one minute and had two fouls right there. Hunter Tyson and uh, Hall and Nick Honor, that was, he was 0 for 5 and finally made a 3 there. So those guys, the bench scoring was helpful in this game. It's been a low scoring game and uh, P.J. Hall has been the best player in the game for Clemson and they have the lead. What will Mississippi State do to get on the scoreboard in the second half? Will anybody come out on fire shooting? And what will the impact of Amir Sims be? We're going to find out shortly. You saw P.J. Hall, T-shirt on, at least for now. So he'll start the second half on the bench. There's Sims, one minute, only took one shot, two fouls. And Brad Brown did not go back with him at all on the court in the first half. So he starts the second. Let's see how quickly he gets a touch and a shot. Here's Hunter right side, three, airborne, way off the mark. Rebound, D.J. Stewart Jr. Puck fake, and the righty runner is way off the mark. Struggles continue. Alamir Dawes will run the show here. Point guard. A lot of time in the backcourt for Clemson tonight. Back cut. Hunter can't lay it in with the left on the reverse layup. As Chase Hunter misfires on a really good pass. Well, you got to think about Hunter. He's got a broken finger, and uh, he missed six weeks, and he just got back. And uh, I think that's affecting him a little bit. Javian Davis also 
in close range. Can't convert. So we're still awaiting the first points of the second half. Here's Sims thinking about his first points of the game. It's a back iron miss on a three. Long rebound. And it comes out to the Bulldog. Davon Smith controls the rock. Smith led the way. Hulo Smith, that is. Center for Mississippi State at seven first half points. Up top, long three for Mississippi State. Much need for Cameron Matthews. His first triple as a Bulldog. He's noted as a defender, even though he's a freshman, which is highly unusual. But they needed some outside shooting, and he produced right there. A little more of that would be nice for the Bulldogs. Amir Sims, the pump fake from three. Really difficult, awkward shot was bumped on the way up and is foul. He wants it to be a couple free throws. Let's see if the on-court officiating crew here in Melbourne, Florida, agrees. Number 35, Tolu Smith is second. Teach first. Well, let's take a look. He's on his way in right here. There's the bump. And that could go either way in terms of whether he was shooting or not. And he's getting the opportunity at the free throw line. Led the team last year in scoring, rebounding, and assists. How about that for a 6'8", 240-pound guy? Impressive. And not only that, but the first time they beat North Carolina at North Carolina, he made a three with two seconds to go to send the game into overtime. And, of course, everyone will remember that in Clemson basketball history. First two points of the game and a couple fouls. By the way, Tola Smith picked up his second foul a moment ago. So keep an eye on that for Mississippi State in a six-point game. Third team all ACC last year for Amir Sims. Hoping for greatness this year for Clemson. You know, and I'm watching the, the personnel makeups that Ben Howland is using in this game. And there's really no two, two guard in the game. DJ Stewart is the three man, really. And they have a point guard. But because Iverson Molinar is not on the trip, he's their normal two guard two guard and they are missing his offense big time DJ Stewart Jr. on the handle for Mississippi State pulls off from 8 feet can't convert they rebound from Smith chance for the end one but he can't hit the layup and Tolu Smith still out there with those two fouls shoots two for the Bulldogs Mississippi State has changed their offense a little bit. They're going to a high pick and roll, and both Smith and Stewart are going to be the guys who are handling the ball, and Tolu Smith is going to be the guy rolling to the basket. But missing free throws is a tough situation for any coach to endure. Coach, three fouls on Sims. Out of the lineup again. There he goes. So, two minutes, 16 seconds. <laughs> Played a minute in the first half and was on the bench and right back on the, well, the socially distanced seat, I guess, here in Melbourne, Florida. And P.J. Hall returns for Clemson. Tyson in the corner. A three rattles out. And Smith the rebound for the Bulldogs. Clemson's doing a good job of getting back. Not that Mississippi State is a fast-break team, but occasionally Davon Smith, number five, can really push it with the dribble. And right there, terrific defense by Dawes to cause that turnover. That was a freshman mistake, toying around with the basketball a little too much. Right here, watch the defensive player, not the ball. Watch the defensive player. Right there, nice reach with his left hand, which is the hand closest to the ball. Dodds scoops to the hoop, circuit shot in traffic, regains and lays it in. Nice four goal, sophomore from New, New Jersey in the second half for Clemson. 48 threes last year to lead the Tigers. And near steal near midcourt against the freshman Smith again. Yes, yeah, Smith is having a little difficulty with Dawes. Dawes, much more experience, played an ACC season already. Smith, a freshman. Matthews for three, second triple the game for Cameron Matthews. Well, maybe Mississippi State has found something with him, huh? 
They did not think of him as a three-point shooter. They think of him as a good defender. Nice double team inside, leaves somebody open. Justin from Olive Branch, Mississippi. And there you go. Corner three by Trapp. He took a corner three just like that in the first half and didn't even draw iron. Yeah, it wasn't close. And uh, But this one, nice swish. It's 17 threes last year. Clyde Trapp, senior guard. First triple a game for him. Right low block, miss for Javian Davis. And traveling call. That's Clyde Trapp. Tries to convert coast to coast. Timeout from Titan Fieldhouse. Space Coast Challenge rolls on tonight from Melbourne, Florida. Welcome back, Space Coast Challenge. Dave Ryan, Bob Wenzel, our entire crew from Titan Fieldhouse, Eastern Florida State College campus, in Brevard County, Florida's Atlantic Coast. It's a just a beautiful time of the year to be here. A lot of snowbirds are down in our state of Florida, Bob. Enjoy the beautiful weather. And these teams are here as well, enjoying some great basketball. Purdue won the first game, beat Liberty in the opener of the inaugural Space Coast Challenge, and the winner will take on the Boilers tomorrow night. Loser to play Liberty, consolation game. Clemson has picked up their pressure man-to-man -man because there's only one point guard in the game all the time. E.J. Stewart now has made a three, and Cameron Matthews has made two threes in the second half, and that's why the game is tightening up a little bit. Benjamin Jalen Young, that's the senior forward, transfer from Louisiana and St. Louis, first points of the game. Alamir Dawes on the way. And a whip to stop the play with a foul call down low or out of bounds. Nobody guarding the inbounder. That means it's five on four on the inbounds. That way you can sometimes get a turnover. Clemson in the lead shooting 31%. They're four of 22 from three and still up by five. A whistle off ball and a foul call. Clyde uh, Trapp picks it up. First foul against the Tiger senior guard. Right back to Clemson. So if you're Ben Hallen coach, it hasn't been smooth. You're trying to get things working offensively. What are the the things you're telling your players in timeouts right now. Well, you know, uh, I mean, they made three threes in the second half so far, and uh, they were shooting blanks in the entire first half. There's not a lot that they can do differently than what they do. They just got to start making some shots. And, uh, you know, their, their offense is inside-oriented, and the guys who are getting the ball close into the basket, when they uh, go up for shots, they're being fouled, and they're missing free throws. So it's, it's kind of... Uh, one of those snowballs that's getting worse and worse. But the start of the second half, I think the outside shooting has to come, and they've got to shoot freely from there, especially guys like DJ Stewart and uh, Johnson and, and Cameron Matthews. They, they, they're they capable of making some threes. The, their problem is that Clemson's playing solid defense on the perimeter, and when the ball goes inside, they're attacking people, and they're recovering well. So the defense of the Tigers has been very, very good in this game. Jonathan Bear hit a shot, then committed a foul. Cameron Matthews driving, leaving off there for Adu, the recent Mississippi State graduate. Tolu Smith, loose chain, grabs it. Way off the mark on the kickback try. Here's Nick Honor back in the game for Clemson. Into the corner of the long shot, Alex Hemingway hit three to the Tigers. Timeout, Ben Howland and Mississippi State. Tigers by 10. Open to play Purdue tomorrow night for the championship. The Tigers' defense has been impressive in this game. Watch the weak side help here and taking the charge. It has led. Not necessarily breakouts, but after turnovers, Clemson has taken advantage and have scored after those situations. 
Long arms by Dawes giving Smith trouble. And then he goes down the other end and gets his own rebound and knocks it into the basket. Clemson defense solid in the first and second half. Point off turnovers. Big difference, right? 17 to 5 in favor of the Tigers, the more experienced group of these two teams. Back underway. Amir Sims is still out of the lineup for Clemson. He has three fouls. He's not been a factor at all in this game so far. DJ Stewart Jr. The battle for the Bulldogs, but it's going to go right back. Well, right there is a good example of what we were just talking about. Mississippi State got a shot in the paint and then missed, but there were four orange jerseys around, so they weren't able to get the offensive board. And as a result, another situation where they don't get a score. Two fouls, Bob, on DJ Stewart Jr. Sophomore from Grace, Mississippi. Nine point game for the Tigers. Bears back in. Transfer from UNC Asheville. Part of the Big South championship team before his first of two torn ACLs. There's an honor take. And two for Nick Honor of Clemson. Well, if Coach Brownell decides that he's going to use Dawes and Honor alternately, he should have a point guard with energy in the game at all times. And a point guard with energy being outside and, and bothering the point guard on the other team can keep people out of their offensive flow, and that's what they've done in this game. Mississippi State has not found their offensive flow at all. Trying to get that one to Tolu Smith. He'll be on his reach. It's another turnover right back to the Tigers. 12 Bulldog turnovers, five miscues for Clemson so far. Miss for Newman the third. And on the rebound, the run out here for Davon Smith of Mississippi State. Way short, jumper Smith again, the freshman. Rebound, Clemson. And Honor set up outside the arc on the left side. Bear trying to work that to Hemingway. Intercepted instead. Hemingway, good recovery defense, but a better finish for Dante. Well, if Mississippi State's going to get back in this game with 12 minutes left to go, I mean, they can't, they, they've got to get a couple of runouts. They can't just stay in their half court defense the entire time and let Clemson get a shot each time. They've got to create turnovers, or they've got to get some runouts to close the gap a little bit. You said earlier tonight in the broadcast, Bob, that Nick Honor would be a volume shooter. Another three for the Fordham transfer. Yeah, uh, two triples tonight, and he is a fearless offensive player. He really is, and, and that's a good description. I mean, he, he has no conscience. I mean, he doesn't know that he was 0 for 5 to start the game. I mean, he just remembers the ones that go in. Two threes and three for eight overall in the game for Honor. 11 to shoot. Bulldogs keep it good. Hustle from Newman the third leads us to a break here in Melbourne, Florida. Nick Hunter dials up a long range three for Clemson. It's good from eight. Tonight, 10.30 Eastern here on CBS Sports Network, our full slate of college hoops action on opening day and night. College hoop season wraps up with number 22 UCLA battling reigning Mountain West regular season champ San Diego State. Only on the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Utah State won the championship of the tournament last year in Vegas before everything was shut down due to COVID. San Diego State, you know, what a season, Bob, last year. Well, it was weird for everybody all around, and uh, everybody's got a story of what happened to them the day that this, <laughs> the, uh, the games were canceled. And, uh, you know, Liberty had a great story in the game earlier today. They were 30-4 and four and didn't get a chance to play. Rutgers, who hadn't been into the NCAA tournament forever, would have been uh, in the tournament last year, but it was canceled. So uh, lots of different stories all around college basketball that um, tough situation for a lot of the kids who were in their last season of play. Struggles continue, Bob, for Mississippi State down by a dozen as Bears back in the game for Clemson, as is Sims. With a total of three minutes in the game tonight one field goal for amir sims the star for clemson all acc preseason pick 
But three fouls, that's been the issue. Here he is on cue, drive baseline. Did he beat the shot clock buzzer? Yes, he did. You can notice the full court pressure in the backcourt. It's not like they're double teaming and trying to trap and steal the ball. They're just trying to apply pressure to a team that doesn't have the only point guard on the team is a freshman. Jalen Johnson up top, lefty jumper misfires, and that's out of bounds as well off the hands of Cameron Matthews. Watch the shot clock in your lower right-hand screen. Three, two. We're in slow motion now. That's why it's going so slowly. Is it out of his hand? Yes, yes it, is. it is. Good call. Great call. Timeout call by Mississippi State. They're in trouble. Largest lead of the night for climbing up 14 on the Bulldogs. Skips four points, one of three from the field so far, and a couple of free throws for the star for Clemson. This is the other matchup between these two teams. Head-to-head, -head, Clemson has won three of the first four. The last time was in November of 2018 in the Never Forget Tribute Classic. So the ACC and SEC head-to-head -to -head tonight. Winner takes on Purdue tomorrow night for the championship. Sims the handle in tight, but he can't quite finish on the righty runner. Too strong. Now that pass broken up, then it comes right to Alex Hemingway. Well, a guy like Sims, who's used to playing the whole game and scoring a lot of points and being involved with, with points, scoring, rebounds, assists, it's got to be a little cold having put, sat on the bench practically the whole game. So if I'm his teammates, I want him touching the ball a bunch. Even if he's not shooting it right now, just let him touch the ball and get involved and work up a sweat a little bit. You know, he had a drive on the last play at the end of the shot clock, and he also had a shot missed in the lane. But he needs more touches right now, just personally. Now, they're up 14, so he can't argue with things. But still, I think for him, he needs this kind of stuff. Get it back to him again. Let him touch the ball again. New in the third, the handle, baseline. Five to shoot for Clemson, knocked out of bounds. They've got five on the Shot clock timer. Sims played 32 minutes a game, Bob, last year. So this is different territory for Amir. The foul trouble tonight. Yeah, for, for sure. And uh, it's hard to come back from something like that. You know, uh, I don't know if there's been many games in his career where he's had to, you know, sit the entire first half like that with two fouls in a minute. Six games, 20 points or more a year ago. Multi-double-double efforts for Amir Sims. They'll certainly need him once... The season gets rolling. Brief non-conference slate into the ACC. Another end, Stewart Jr. thinking about a three long range. Another misfire for Mississippi State. The struggles continue for the Bulldogs offensively. Hemingway, other end, makes them pay with a deep three. He's the best shooter in the game. Coach Brownell told us last year he wasn't ready to use him, and then he threw him into a game here and there, and he kept making threes. <laughs> so he kept playing them, and he kept scoring. And sometimes you find a guy like that. Tolo Smith is fouling away the basket by Jonathan Bear. Bulldogs have missed either last nine. You know, the other thing I'm looking at Mississippi, and I'm thinking about what a good coach Ben Howland is, and I'm looking at the personnel and the makeup of their team. You got a bunch of guys here who don't know one another. You know, I mean, you got a bunch of freshmen coming in one, two, three, four freshmen, five freshmen. Uh, who played for different places all over the place. And you've got transfers who sat out one year. you got transfers who are in playing for the first time, and they didn't have to sit out last year. So, I mean, um, the fact that they're sitting so far apart on the side has nothing to do with what I'm talking about. Right. <laughs> uh, but, you know, that, that that's social distancing and, and masks, and that's good to see like that. And uh, these players are all being pe tested every day during the course of the tournament. And uh, But uh, I think that they have no um, feel for one another. And uh, as I'm watching it, they're trying to do what they're supposed to do. They're trying to play tough defense. But offensively, they, they don't know where each other are on the court at all times. Foul called. Sims trying to drive toward the basket. After Smith made one free throw, eight points, nine rebounds tonight for Tolu Smith of Mississippi State. What I would like to see, even though Clemson has a big lead right now, and not, I'm not saying that they should do this in this game, but I sort of would like to see P.J. Hall and Amir Sims playing together at the same time. Me too. And uh, I think that's that's their four and five for uh, crunch time and for 
you know, the, the larger number of minutes that are going to be this year. And, of course, you know, P.J.'s a freshman, so I'm sure he's, you know, other guys are taking some of those minutes. And uh, Brad told us that they're deep, and, he, you know, he wants to get some playing time early for guys, knowing what's going to happen in the ACC, how tough it's going to be. So uh, I see what he's doing in this game. But um, if I'm a Clemson fan, I'm, I'm going to be anxious to watch those two play together. Davis back in the lineup for Mississippi State handles. Top of the key trying to get that for Smith. But broken up. Good over, Blake. And the steal and run out for Amir Sims and a foul called on the way to the basket. Clemson star is so dangerous in the open court. Two fouls on Davis of Mississippi State. We haven't seen the three-point shot from Sims, and he's he's a reliable three-point shooter at 6'8", 240. Hammond Way. And Smith, the two physical overplay on Sims. Another foul on Smith. That's his third. We'll take a timeout here at Titan Fieldhouse. Space Coast Challenge rolls on. Clemson up here. Championship game tomorrow night here in Melbourne, Florida. Purdue, the Big Ten, Matt Painter's team took care of Liberty from the A-Sun by 13 first game. And either Clemson or Mississippi State will take on the Boilers tomorrow night. Consolation game first, 6 Eastern on CBS Sports Network. The entire Space Coast Challenge first ever event. Brevard County, Melbourne, Florida, the Space Coast. Kennedy Space Center about a 30-minute drive away. You can actually see the rockets go up Bob, from our backyard here in Melbourne. It's pretty amazing. So on recently on the way to the space center. Follow from Smith on the miss and transition for Mississippi State and a foul call. Foul Amir Sims is four. Four fouls on Sims, another one. Smith to line. Speed on the way by Dayon Smith. Not sure about that call against him. He's right back up. And on cue, P.J. Hall is back in for Clemson. Well, when you alternate these two guys, instead of them having having them play together, like, a, you know, I, I hope we see a lot of that during the course of the season, and I think we will. But uh, in situations like this, you always have an offensive threat in the game. Sims hasn't showed it tonight. But P.J. Hall has, in his limited number of minutes, he's been very, very effective. Had eight points in the first half and has shown that he can really be a solid player. Steal, D.J. Stewart Jr. Up he goes. And down it goes to the lefty lay-in for the Bulldogs. Showing some life here down by 11. Timeout call by Brad Brownell and the Clemson Tigers. Take a quick timeout as well. 7.20 to go second half. Mississippi State closing the gap. Eleven and seven record for Ben Howland in the SEC a year ago. Their most wins in the Southeastern Conference in the last 12 years. They won 11 of their last 16 games and won 20 overall. Tonight trying for his 500th career win. It won't be easy. On the comeback trail, down 11 here with 7.15 and counted to go second half against Clemson. The defense has been solid. It's going to continue to be solid, I'm sure of that. Whether they can convert at the other end is uh, the question that we need to ask ourselves. And so far, they have not answered it in a good way so far in the game. But there you see the D. You know, solid D, aggressive, pressure in the basketball, but only out to about 20 feet. They don't extend and deny that much. Connor nice. Tyson Jr. is back in here. Yeah, and, and he's a good offensive player. You see you see the token pressure at 94 feet here, okay? This is not designed to trap anybody in the backcourt or trap at half court or anything like that. It's to take time off the clock, pressure the point guard. And right here, this is excellent by Mississippi State out of the timeout. They put everybody above the free throw line and had one cutter to the basket, and he got open. DJ Stewart Jr. The back cut and gathers and scores for Mississippi State. Shot way short 
from Chase Hunter. An air ball in the team drought now for Clemson, nearing three minutes. Top of the key, three missed. Stewart Jr. had a hand on the offensive rebound, driving toward the 10 and lost it out of bounds. Mississippi State on the move, pass toward the sideline, and the cutter is away from the ball. Notice everybody above the free throw line, so there's no help inside. That's what you're looking for. Great half court set and execution. And it's down to nine as the Clemson drought continues here. Well, Clemson, the, the, the reason there's a drought for them, Dave, is they're taking bad shots. I mean, before they were getting good shots every trip down the floor. Now, be, when they had the lead, they didn't play well with the lead. That's a sign of an immature team. We saw Purdue get ahead, and when they got ahead, they got a good shot every single time and extended their lead. Clemson has not done that in this game so far. They're not getting quality shots. Now, do back in the game, recent graduate, first in his family to graduate, interdisciplinary studies major at Mississippi State. He's got the graduation patch on his uniform. Congratulations to Abdul Adu, but he's trying to become a factor in this game back on the floor for Mississippi State. Long way to go, just under six on this rolling clock and regulation. Matthews the handle for Adu. Ten to shoot for the Bulldogs. Cameron Matthews with five to shoot. Stewart Jr. Two to shoot. He'll drive. Hang and way off the mark. Misses the rim and a shot clock. Violation against Mississippi State. Not a great half court position. Got the grad patch. Pretty cool, huh, Bob? Yeah, I didn't, didn't know about that. And uh, I did know about the graduating. That's very, very cool. Officially graduated today, so they had a little ceremony. They're shooting around. They put on Twitter. Cool picture. The Plumba. Seen that before. Guys graduate mid-season. Sometimes a coach will put on the motorboard and you know, kind of pretend to be the, the dean of the school, hand out the diploma. Oh, my goodness. Sims gets in for one play and fouls. Well. Not a night to remember for Amir Sims, that's for sure. No. He is fouled out of the game with four points, a total of eight minutes, one of five shooting for Clemson. Wow. Right back to the chair. <laughs> He's been there a lot of four points tonight. Well, the, the bad Amir's news time. is that he had not such a good game. The good news is he should be very well rested for the game Absolutely, tomorrow, tomorrow night. They hope it's the championship game against Purdue at 8.30 Eastern here on CBS Sports Network. <laughs> well, Mississippi, good, good point. Mississippi State only has 37 points and there's five minutes to go in a game. So uh, unless there's a dramatic change, which is possible, uh, that is going to be the eventuality. Another miss for Purdue in tight. Too strong, heel the rim. That's just been a struggle offensively for the Bulldogs in this one. And we haven't seen a new shot blocking in this game either. You know, he's got 182 on the uh, career. He's six on the career list with blocked shots, but he hasn't had much of an opportunity in this one to do that. Top 10 SEC in rebounding last year as well. It hasn't been a factor. I don't know, minutes either in this game for him so far. Tyson had that blocked away into the shot clock cycle. Play rolls on here for Mississippi State and Davon Smith. 4-3, the freshman is off the mark, but he does have the offensive glass. Fresh 20 Bulldogs drives for the basket, it can't finish again in tight. Another crack at it, also short. Matthews, the battle, the tie-up, and the whistle stops play. Clemson is doing a good job when big guys get the ball close to the basket, they body up. So it takes away the jumping. Look at the bodying up right here. Now he misses that one. That's a, a easy one. But notice how the players get in tight to him. And it takes away a guy's jumping ability when you get close to him as he goes up. Much different look. Mississippi State team from a year ago. They scored 73.4 points a game. But you have two players drafted in the NBA <laughs> draft last week. It's going to change your outlook offensively considerably for for Ben Hallen. No doubt Some about that. And they had two other players graduate also. The right. top four scorers also. Uh, not graduate, but but are no longer with yep. the program. So uh, this is a total rebuild for them. 
and, and it's showing here in the first game. Uh, there's no offensive continuity with the group right now. And that will come. That will come with more practice and serious practice and games. Off the ball, offensive foul. It's another miscue for Mississippi State in this opener. In tough form so far. Timeout, Melbourne, Florida. Clemson is up by nine, hoping to take on Purdue tomorrow night for the championship of the inaugural Space Coast Challenge. Purdue knocked off Liberty. First game that I hear in Melbourne, Florida. 77-64. Tigers Bulldogs game two. So winner takes on the Boilermakers tomorrow. Championship game, 8.30 Eastern. We'll have it for you, Bob and I, on the call. The first ever Space Coast Challenge. I cannot wait to see Purdue play again because Edie, the seven foot four freshman center, was absolutely awesome in his college debut. And what good news for Matt Painter and Purdue basketball. And uh, that game got the attention of every fan and coach in the Big Ten. 19 points for Edie, 9 of 10 shooting. Purdue had four players, double figures in that tournament opening win over Liberty from the A-Sun. Here is Hall, pulls up, left of the lane, and hits from 10. He is great at facing up from 16, 17 feet. And uh, Clemson is going to run stuff for him as the season goes on here. When they need a basket, he could be the guy to go to. 10 points, 5 or 6 shooting for the freshman. First career game. There you go. 5 or 6. Figures, not bad. And they're all jumpers. There's one inside shot. The other one's all mid-range jump shots. Really effective from the baseline, you're right. Foul called with 2.57 to go here in our second half tonight. John Newman the third picks it up. Junior from Greensboro, North Carolina. Couple big games late last year for Brad Brownell. Yeah, he did, and he's been kind of invisible in this game a little bit, and uh, averaged 10 points a game last year. 23 points against Louisville in that huge win. Uh, top six wins, top six ranked team victories they had late last year, three of them. Yeah. Of course, North Carolina, and then... No, no, not North Carolina. Right, but Duke. That, that was a history-making game. Oh, oh, yeah, Duke, yeah. Florida State, yeah. Louisville. Yeah. Exciting win last year for Clemson. That's what Brad Brownell told us. Look, it was an up-and-down year. We didn't win as many as we wanted with 16-15 record. Ninth in the ACC, but they made some history as well. Yep. A lot of great things to build on for this year. There's optimism. There's no doubt about that. And uh, he, he doesn't look optimistic right now <laughs> because this has been a sloppy game by both teams, really. Uh, but they are ahead right now. But uh, two minutes to go. And uh, it's there's certainly time left for Mississippi State. Stewart Jr., the miss. Matthews kept it alive for Smith. It's out of bounds. And 17 to shoot here for Mississippi State. You know, when I look at Clemson and I'm evaluating them and looking at them, and, and they got a lot of nice pieces, but if, unless everybody plays their A game, they're going to have difficulty with the top teams in the league. Two fouls, Hunter Tyson. Junior forward out of North Carolina for Clemson. Six ten, redshirt sophomore, Tolu Smith to the free throw line. Smith has played well this game tonight, Bob. He's got ten points, ten rebounds. He's got a lot of opportunities, you know. I mean, he's missed a bunch of shots, but they really go to him, don't they? I mean, uh, Ben Hallam, when he talked about Tolu Smith, he 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 talked in glowing terms about how effective he is in practice and how hard he works and how he's the best rebounder on the team, and. Uh, you know, he's going to be a workhorse type of player, but he needs guys around him to be able to make some shots for him to be effective because if he draws a crowd of four or five guys, his shooting percentages are not going to be good. Originally recruited by Arkansas, LSU, Texas A&M, and West Virginia. Got a lot of potential. Coach Allen told us, man, he just killed it on the boards of practice. Crushing it on the boards. He's got good re. Uh, some good range as well, about 17 feet, he thought, during the pregame workouts. And I haven't seen any 17 foot. No, I haven't seen game. that either. He's had some struggles inside, too. Matthews the steal. 
Here come the Bulldogs down by nine. Smith had a good shot to really throw one down, but lost the handle in transitions, turned back over to Clemson. Yeah, that's that's been happening all night to them. A lot of shots close to the basket that have not come to fruition in this game. But uh, the last two possessions, this full court pressure has been very effective. Good trap situation. Turnovers tonight, Bob. Sorry about that for Mississippi State. And Clemson solves the backcourt pressure. One or two to go in our second half. High post, Tyson. And a foul call. DJ Stewart Jr. picks it up. Time for the Aventus Health play of the game, Bob. Earlier in the game, Sims drives the baseline, shot clock running down, off his fingers, just in time to beat the shot clock. One of the few plays that this all-star player has made in this one due to foul trouble. So Amir Sims, the event has played the game. Four points, one of five shooting. That was his only field goal and a couple free throws before fouling out. So not a night to remember for Sims. Eight minutes of action. That's it for the... All ACC preseason pick. Well, like I said before, he's going to be playing tomorrow. He should be well rested. Yeah, got a smile on his face right now because his team is winning. Doesn't seem too upset now about it, does he? No, no, and, and good. that's a good thing. I mean, we've been heard hearing about his personality, and he's got such a big personality, and he's really liked by his teammates and uh, you can see right there he could be sulking because he didn't have a good game instead right. he's smiling because his team is ahead and maybe going to wrap up a W here I like that attitude and he's coaching up his guy still yep talking to his team in there and uh, we've been told about his uh, mentoring of uh, PJ Hall and uh, PJ Hall looks like a real player to me and uh, that's no uh no revelation to Clemson fans. People have known about him for quite some time. This kid is a skillful six foot ten player. Good first game for him. Top ranked high school recruit, state of South Carolina last year, and has shown us why. Ramirez Sims back up, but I'm with you, Bob. I'm sure there's some rotations in the works for the Clemson coaching staff to get them both on the floor. In effective roles coming up this season. 90 seconds and counting. An 11 point Clemson lead. Hoping to play Purdue tomorrow night for the championship. Alamir Dawes, the handle top of the key. Alex hemming away the sophomore. Lost the handle, taken away by Cameron Matthews. Here come the Bulldogs. Whistle transition. Offensive foul against Cameron Matthews. Recovery defense. Outstanding for Clemson. Hemingway took the charge right there, and that is a that is a freshman mistake, first game of his career uh, in college. Uh, you know, just gets, you know, he's handling the ball, but I mean, he's, there's too much traffic. There's, he doesn't stop on two feet, and uh, when you stop on two feet, you can con control your forward momentum, and he didn't do that. Learning curve involved with a lot of guys out here. So for conversation's sake, Bob, let's go back to last year for Clemson and the 0 for 59 streak at North Carolina. I know yep. UNC was not the team they've been yep. last year, but what was that like, do you think, for Coach Brownell, the fan base, the players, oh. to finally break that streak? Oh, my God. Uh, you know, I mean, it, it's it's awesome. I mean, it's a moment in history for them. And uh, it was hanging around their neck. Not that they lived with it every day or mm -hmm. thought about it every day, but that win was fantastic. And uh, it's it, it's off their back. And uh, that's a wonderful thing. Covered 94 years and 59 games. Yikes. 94 years. They've won in overtime at <laughs> UNC at Chapel Hill. 79-76, down 10 with two minutes to go in regulation. Storm back won that game. That's pretty cool. That's a great moment for Clemson basketball. Yep. Driving there, Stewart Jr. Hangs, hits with the left hand. Steal. Stewart Jr. thinking about back-to-back -back baskets. And a foul called first before that shot. And a really nice play in the inbounds. Well, in the end game, you know when chess is a beginning and a middle and an end game. Right. And, and in the end game, Mississippi State's been pretty good. I mean, their pressure full court's been solid. That steal right there. 
Uh, they forced another turnover when the ball came through uh, half court, uh, and, and their aggressiveness defensively showed at the end of the game. Uh, but offensively, it's been a struggle for them all game long, and uh, it's going to be for Ben Howland and, until he can get some more experience for guys uh, the way it's set up right now. And I think for a team uh, that didn't have any exhibition games and no scrimmages, I, I, it, it might not hurt an experienced team much, but I think it hurt Mississippi State quite a bit, to, to be honest. Stewart Jr., one more free throw coming. Six freshmen, seven sophomores on the roster. Really young team. The most freshmen and sophomores in the nation. Purdue has 10. And Mississippi State has 13. <laughs> That's a lot of youth and a lot of guys to replace. We talked about the NBA draft picks. It's a big change in Starkville for sure this year. Foul call. Good hustle for Matthews. Yeah. And, and, and if Water's there and Perry's there, a lot of these players aren't playing right. you know um, so they become substitutes and now they become starters so it's new roles for these guys and uh w w what we're seeing probably should have been expected one more free throw for cameron matthews freshman olive branch mississippi he made two threes in the game and uh there was a bright spark at that juncture of the game when he made those. But you got to hand, uh, hand it to Clemson. Their defense has been solid, and uh, they come up with enough threes and enough offensive firepower to, to be in control of the game. Fifty-four point eight seconds left in our second half here tonight. Ben Howland pretty high on Cameron Matthews. Good rebounder, good defender. The issue is the shooting. Saw a couple threes, as Bob talked about from him. So it's about potential, the upside for Mississippi State. Yeah. It is an abbreviated season. Without the exhibition games, without a lot of non-conference play. It's a tough challenge against Clemson, a team thinking about the NCAA tournament this year. Well, last year was uh, Mississippi's chance to advance in the NCAA tournament because they were top four teams in the SEC. Right. Uh, they had outstanding uh, talent. They had balance offensively. And uh, it's just too bad those guys didn't get an opportunity to play in the tournament. And everybody, like I said before, had a story about that. And uh, somber faces on the sidelines for these guys, but it, it's the first game of the season. They'll be able to play another game right away tomorrow, which is a good thing when you get beat. And uh, that's what's nice about these four-team tournaments. 40 seconds left regulation. Alamir Dawes, the second free throw successful for Clemson. Long-range miss, Davon Smith. Rebound, Matthews, another foul. As Tyson commits the personal, and Matthews right back to the free throw line here for Mississippi State. A miss, but hustle on the glass, and that's what you got to do. And he's in the right place at the right time. And another opportunity at the free throw line. Cameron's mom got a scholarship at South Alabama. She was from Los Angeles. And I'm actually settled in the Mississippi area after playing college ball. So second generation scholarship athlete, the Matthews family. And one more free throw here for the freshman. Ben Howland called him a glue guy, potential glue guy. Yeah, yeah. What you need, right? I mean, you have to have that. Yeah, and you can see, I mean, he, he's, uh, he's able to make some shots, but he's a tough guy, and he, he tries to make good passes when the opportunity is there. Well, Clemson's going to go away with a victory in this one. ACC beats SEC on this evening with these two teams, and Clemson will be playing Purdue for the championship tomorrow. And... Uh, also, Mississippi State and Liberty get an opportunity to play one another. So early season, two games, and uh, all of these teams happy to be here and, and happy to be playing basketball. No question. We're happy you're broadcasting. Amen. <laughs> CBS Sports Network, it's awesome to have the season starting. So Clemson will do this one, make it official, 53-42 for the Tigers. P.J. Hall really impressive in his first game with 10 points and 7 rebounds. So the bracket is complete now. Consolation, 6 Eastern tomorrow. Liberty will take on Mississippi State.
at Purdue and Clemson. Coach, it'll be a fun final to watch tomorrow night. I'm looking forward to it, big time. And I uh, can't wait to see uh, Matt Painter's group get out there and uh, and Brad Brownell's team. It's going to be a nice clash in the championship game. Coming up next, Inside College Basketball on CBS Sports Network. The guys get you totally updated on what's happening. Opening day and night in college hoops across the nation. Now for Bob Wentz and the entire crew, it's Dave Ryan saying so long from Melbourne, Florida, Titan Fieldhouse, and the Space Coast Challenge. Now we'll send you to the studio for Inside College Basketball. Clemson beats Mississippi State by 11.